Is this sneaker the biggest flop of 2023? Today we're going to be talking about the Fear Pack Air Jordan 3s. There was so much hype before this shoe came out and soon as they dropped, nobody bought them. But y'all know me, I had to get a pair still. Oh yeah, and if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA Show. Hey! So before we start breaking down this shoe and going over all the details and talking about why they didn't sell out, you know we gotta talk about the history first. Back in 1988, we saw the Air Jordan 3 hit the court and everybody went crazy when they saw him jumping from the free throw line. From that time on, the Air Jordan 3 model became one of the most iconic models of all time. And because of that, we've seen multiple colorways and iterations over the years. Back in 2013, we saw a new colorway of the Air Jordan 3, and that was in the Fear Pack. That pack consisted of the 3s, the 4s, and the 5s. And the whole intention behind that pack was tied to the original commercial back in 2008. Look me in the eye. It's okay if you're scared. So am I. But we're scared for different reasons. I'm scared of what I won't become. And you're scared of what I could become. Look at me. I won't let myself end where I started. I won't let myself finish where I began. I know what is within me. Even if you can't see it yet. Look me in the eyes. I have something more important than courage. I have patience. I will become what I know I am. This was a part of the Be Legendary campaign that Jordan Brand was running, and this commercial in particular was called Look Me In My Eyes. And one of the big quotes from that commercial is, I'm scared of what I won't become, you're scared of what I could become. And they took that quote and tied it to the pack by adding it to the sock liners as well. And now in 2013, 10 years later, for the anniversary, Jordan Brand decided to release the Fear Air Jordan 3s. A lot of people were assuming they were gonna be the whole pack, and obviously with the Jordan 4 hype, people prefer the 4s, and I'm honestly looking for the 5s. But either way, this this is what we got and there was a lot of hype building up on this shoe months before it came out but now they're just sitting on shelves everywhere so it kind of got me wondering is it because of the quality of the shoe let's go ahead and take it to the studio and start breaking this shoe down so this box is actually crazy like we talked about from the look me in my eyes commercial those same quotes are on top of the lid of the box and the same quotes that we saw on the insole of the air jordan 3 fear back in 2013. So it's dope how we're seeing elements from the previous release already integrated onto the box. So you have an all over matte black lid with a glossy finish with the text right there. And then you have a big jump man in the center of the lid. Now, typically on the Jordan 3 box, you have a lift off lid, but here it's a hinge lid like we see on the new retros. And then on the side of the box right here, it's actually another dope touch. You have your cement print all throughout the box right here. And it's dope because it has like a gradient fade from a darker black to the gray. Now looking at the size tag on the box it says air jordan 3 retro night stadium total orange size 13 just for me and retail on these was 210 bucks which we'll talk about the price a little bit later and why these things are still sitting on shelves now lift and open the lid of the box right here same thing like the top of the box you have that text all throughout the paper in a light gray font and then you have the shoe oh you got the shoe okay first impression of this sneaker Honestly, the materials are nice. I like how they went about it with the cut of the shoe, but there look like there's a couple differences on these compared to the OG. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the original pair in my collection anymore. I used to have the entire set. I still got the fours, which are pretty beat, but I need to get those to retro again. And the fives, huh, I got a long story for the fives. I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. So for now, let's go ahead and get into all the details of the sneaker and then I'll show you guys some side-by-side -side comparison images so you guys can see the differences between this retro and the original version in 2013. Looking at the outsole, you have an all black bottom and honestly, it almost looks like it's like a really, really dark gray, not even a black. And then you have an orange pod right here on the ball of the foot and then you have your Jordan branding right here in the back end of the shoe. Now we all know if you have the Jordan branding, that means what? You're gonna have a Jordan brand on the back of the heel as well if you see nike on the bottom that means you're gonna have nike air on the heel but this is like a retro plus type colorway so that means what no nike air no nike branding on the bottom either now wrapping up to the midsole right here you have a two-tone with a fade on the back end you have a white and then a gray and actually the white it looks a little bit more like uh i guess like it has a grayish undertone to it it's not like a pure white 
And then above that, you have a lighter gray that fades into a darker black with a speckle kind of flaring throughout that. And then that goes the same way right here on the inside of the foot as well. And when I first looked at this, I was like, it kind of looks like it's off. I remember like the previous one, like the black kind of went a little bit more forward. And then when I started looking at the side by side images, I was like, oh yeah, it's definitely different. So if you see the midsoles on the two shoes right there, you can definitely see this one is faded a little bit more backward and it's a lot more gray on the side of the foot. And kind of like, I guess, I don't know if it creates a little bit more contrast with the upper or not, whatever you guys want to consider that. Definitely a big visual difference to me compared to the original when I first saw those. And another thing that I noticed as well on the front end of the toe the other one i'm pretty sure was a white stitch that just matched the rubber around the front end this actually has more of like a smoke kind of heather gray stitch that goes around here on the front end of the shoe giving it a little bit more of a flare a little bit more of a texture so again another slight difference you have an exposed air unit right here and that's all in orange and then onto the upper there's definitely some differences with the upper too first thing that i would say i noticed was the elephant print that you see on the side of the foot Everybody talks about this and I feel like this one's a lot like, I don't know if you say shinier or like brighter or whatever you want to say, but I feel like the coloring, just the tone of it, the shade of it is a lot more vibrant. And I think when it comes to the retro, you can see that they're kind of like emphasizing certain areas of the shoe. And as you see with the side by side images, hopefully that helps you guys see the differences as well. But that's another thing that I kind of noticed as well. I was like, man, this is really kind of popping out a little bit more than normal. Now, in between that right there, you have a mud guard that wraps all around the side of the foot, standard to your classic Air Jordan 3. And with that, the material is gonna be like a waxy suede. It's like a little bit textured. If you go the wrong way, it feels a little bit more rough. And if you go the right way, it feels a lot more smoother. And then onto the upper right here, you have a Nubuck material, which is really, really nice as well. And I feel like overall the quality so far, I'm not mad at the quality at all. Now, like I said earlier, going to the back end of the shoe, where you have a black tab right here, and then you have an orange Jumpman with the orange air just below that. And then you have an all black Nubuck just above that on the collar with the perforated dots. And then that's gonna match the same thing right here around the eye holes in the middle of the foot. Classic like your Air Jordan 3. Now, when it comes to the plastic pieces on this shoe, these are gonna be very, very similar when it comes to the coloring and the pattern as well as the original version. And it's gonna be orange at the bottom, gray in the middle, and then orange at the top. And then they're gonna come standard with a pair of all black laces there's no additional laces that come with the shoe i feel like a sail or a gray or orange i feel like any of those would honestly look good in the shoe now looking at the tongue right here again you got your perforated black nubuck tongue and then on that you have your flat area right here at the top end with the large orange jump man i feel like the jump man has definitely got bigger on the newer retros compared to the previous ones i'm not mad at it it's still cool and then behind the tongue and on the sock liner on the inside that's going to be an all black and then you're going to have an orange jump man on the right foot and an orange jump man on the left foot and honestly this is a big switch up right here uh, like i said earlier the fear they had that all imprinted on the insoles and on the sock liner area of the shoe and now it's just an all black sock liner so to me i'm like y'all put it on the box y'all put it on the paper but then y'all didn't put it on the insole so I get that, like maybe they're just kind of like adding one edition and then putting that storytelling in a different aspect and saying, hey, you know, some people don't see it on the insole, so let's put it on the box and, you know, emphasize it a little bit more. I get that. But man, that, that was a dope touch. I remember seeing that on the Fear Pack and I was like, oh, this is super, super dope. So honestly, that one uh, is kind of a letdown. Now, besides that, I just want to show you guys the side by side image again. Like we were talking about earlier, look at the shape of the shoe. A lot different when it comes to the new 2023 retro because what? They're going back to that OG style, the OG cut, the tongue, the low, you know, cut on the front of the toe. Everything is going to be a little bit different on that aspect. And then overall, the coloring, you can see, yes, to an uneducated sneaker wizard, they're going to be like, oh, the shoe looks the same. But as we started to break it down a little bit more, you guys notice. Not a lot of differences, but at the same time, there's definitely a lot of differences from the original to the new retro, which got me kind of wondering, is it the differences of the shoe? Is it the time of the market? What's going on? A lot of different shoes coming out. There's so much nostalgia. This is a 10 year anniversary sneaker. Why is the shoe still sitting on shelves everywhere? I did a quick search online and I saw these available literally on like every single site. And then I looked on sneakers app and I was like, wow, they're sitting there too. Essentially a full size run on there too. So even though I was excited to add this shoe to my collection, even though, even though this is my least favorite of the three, I still wanted to get these back because I had a lot of memories from the past. 
But I'm like, yo, am I tripping? Like, why did why does nobody care about these anymore? So I started to ask a couple friends, and they were like, yo, those are fire, great shoes for the collection, but I'm just gonna wait on them. I think they're gonna go on sale. I get that. And I posted this poll on my Instagram story asking the people the simple question: is this shoe fire or is this shoe trash? And if you haven't already, make sure you follow me on IG so you can participate in the polls and see all the results here on the channel. Ask them a simple question, this is what they said. 74% of the people said fire and 26, 26% of the people said trash. Now when I see those type of poll results, that means what? Typically the shoe is like selling out in certain sizes. You can find it some places, but not everywhere. But this shoe is literally available everywhere, at least everywhere that I've looked online and everywhere that I've been when it comes to retail stores. I've seen this shoe sitting on shelves in a lot of sizes. So. It's kind of like that weird position, and I get it. There's a lot of shoes coming out right now. You got the Holiday, you got the Gratitudes, the Powder Puff Girls, the Kobe's, the this, the that. There's the Cherries, the this. There's just so many releases coming out right now. And some people are like, yo, I need to pump the brakes. Maybe wait on this for a little bit, especially if it's sitting. Oh yeah, I might be able to catch these on sale or at the outlets. And it's crazy to think because when the Fear Pack first came out, I remember vividly, I got the whole pack, the threes, the fours, the fives, and Everybody was going crazy at the time. Like the shoes was reselling for money, everybody, you know, all the different stuff. I kept mine for a while. Oh yeah, speaking of the sad story with the fives, <laughs> I would have kept the fives because I really love the fives. It's like the material on the side of the foot, that's like the entire five and it's like a green version. Super, super dope. I feel like that was the most limited one of the three, at least what I remember from back in the day. But either way, I got the shoes, literally got my size. I had them sitting in my collection for like a year and a half or something like that and I was like, Ah, I'm ready to bust these out. I'm about to, you know, I'm about to wear these today. I go to put the shoe on and I'm like, bro, these things like fit real big. Like what's going on? Like I know Jordan 5 is kind of big sometimes. Like, you know, new retros, different shapes. Okay. I checked the size tag, bro. It's a size 14 <laughs> in a size 13 box. So I literally bought them from Nike and everything like, which was crazy. And obviously you can't return it. The shoe is reselling for like, at that time it was like 500 or $600. And I'm like, bro, what do I do? So I was like trying to find trades. Like, yo, I got the shoe with a different size box. Like I need a 13. I couldn't find trades. And I actually ended up selling them to one of my homies. And that was my sob story basically to the Jordan 5 fear. So I never got to wear that shoe and I really wanted to. And I thought like when they said this was coming out, like, yo, the fours are coming out. The fives are coming out. They're just going to drop the whole pack. Like, it, you know, but then what happened? We ain't heard no news yet. We just hearing the threes and that's it. So. I'm hoping, I'm praying that they drop the fours because obviously the fours hype is crazy. So everybody's gonna talk about the fours, but we've been seeing a lot of Air Jordan fives coming out as well. And then we got the burgundies, we got the olives and we got some new colorways coming out. So you know what I'm saying? Just throw the fear fives in there for you, boy. I just need a chance to wear them. I ain't never got a chance to rock them yet. But who knows? We'll see what happens in due time. Like for example, the DMP sixes, right? Those came out three years ago and now we're getting the gratitude 11s with a different name, but they're like the DMP 11s three years later. So who knows? We might see the fear fives three years from now. I don't know. Hint, hint, wink, wink. All right, you guys, I think I've talked enough. I'll see you guys in another video. I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you got this shoe in your collection, let me know what you think about them down below in the comment section, or if you plan on waiting on them and grabbing them later on sale or something, I completely understand. Let me know all your thoughts down below. I'll see you guys in another one. I would never let you down. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more, I have a ton on the inside when it comes to my Sneakerhead Academy. It's an eight-week program that breaks down everything when it comes to the ins and outs of the shoe game, learning the market, and how to grow and scale your collection at the same time, or turn it into a hustle and getting a bunch of money if you'd like to do that as well. And if you want to invest in the real estate, I have all the tips and tricks in live meetups where we do monthly meetups and everybody jumps in and we go over a call and we talk about different goals and aspirations that we have and how we can help each other get there. So if that's something that you're interested in, hit the link down below, get signed up. I would love to see you on the inside. It's the holidays right now, so we got a special going as well. All right, you guys, I'm out. Let's in my DNA. Hey, hey, the hey, only choice I like to make what I'm aware it's today. One of those. I would never let you down. It's in my DNA. The only choice I like to make what I'm aware today. I was made for it.